Keep your heads up and your arms covered, family. Jesus Christ went to prepare a place for us, and he's coming back to get us and take us to that place in our Father's house. And here's the verse of the day, and it's Psalms 103, verse 8. The Lord is merciful and gracious, slow to anger and plenteous in mercy. Praise you, Father, that your mercy is new every morning. And in yesterday's video, I went over Daniel chapter 9 and the 70 weeks, the 490 years that Israel has to reconcile. And our father had Daniel write this, and right at the beginning of the verse, he wants us to know and understand that from the going forth of the commandment to restore and to build Jerusalem until the Messiah, the Prince, shall be 483 years, 69 weeks. And from the going forth of that commandment to restore and build Jerusalem, the street shall be built again and the wall, even in troublesome times. And I showed you the current walls of the old city of Jerusalem were built between 1533 and 1540, a seven year period on orders of Ottoman Sultan Solomon, the Magnificent they called him, and Jewish people called him King Solomon, who provided them with seven gates. And remember, that was in 1540. So that was 483 years ago. So understand that from the going forth of the commandment to restore and to build Jerusalem, there shall be 483 years until Messiah, Jesus Christ, comes. And the streets shall be built again, and the wall, even in troublesome times. And in this time period, from 1533 to 1540, there was major wars going on. So I dug a little deeper, and he's a rewarder of those who diligently seek him. So now I'm going to show you what caused him to rebuild the walls and the streets that led to the walls. And real quick, there's actually a street named after him, Solomon Street. It says it's the main drag running between eastern and western Jerusalem. And here's what I found seeking Jerusalem walls and gates. The Ottoman Sultan Solomon the Magnificent had a dream in which he saw powerful lions about to tear him about as punishment for not properly protecting the holy city. This was a sign from heaven, whereupon he ordered the building of the wall that encircles the old city to the present day. He also decreed that images of lions he had seen in his dream were to be placed in the facade of the eastern gate, the lion's gate. The south wall was completed only in 1540. And as you can see right here, it says Ottoman Sultan Solomon the Magnificent rebuilt it together with the city walls, but walled it up in 1541. And it stayed that way, and it's still sealed up to today. And the reason he sealed it up was probably the same reason they originally sealed it up. As you can see right here, according to the Jewish tradition, the Messiah will enter the city through the Golden Gate when he arrives. To prevent the Messiah from coming, the gate was blocked off by Muslim conquerors in the 8th century. Ezekiel 44, 2, this gate shall be shut, it shall not be opened, and no man shall enter in by it, because the Lord, the God of Israel, hath entered in by it. Therefore, it shall be shut. Well, Jesus Christ already came, and next time he comes, it will just be in the clouds. He will only be visiting to open the graves and rapture us. And then when we come back with him, the second coming, he's not walking through any gate. He's bringing the new Jerusalem down. And something else gigantinormous happened in 1542. The Jesuits were founded with the approval of Pope Paul III. Well, here's what's so gigantinormous about that. When you scroll down, you can see that it happened on September 27th, like Daniel 927 in 1540. So on September 27th, it will be 483 years ago. 
Now on to the signs in the sun, the moon, and the stars, right where Jesus Christ said they would be. And we're all looking at July 26th because 726, the definition in Strong's Bible Concordance is harpazo. And on 726, as you can see right here in what they call the constellation Leo, you can see Regulus, they call it the heart of the lion. And there's three what they call planets surrounding the heart of the lion, Mars, Mercury, and Venus. And right now, today, you can see that the moon and Venus and Mars are all surrounding the heart of the lion, Regulus. And a couple years ago, Jesus Christ told me to keep my eyes on the lion. And remember the dream that Sultan Solomon had, that he was going to be devoured by lions if he didn't send forth the commandment, the decree to build the gates and the walls again. And tomorrow, as you can see, underneath what they call Leo, the lion, the moon, Mars, and Venus are all lined up in a straight line. And it's on 721. And when you go to Bible Strong's Concordance for 721, the definition is a lamb. So you know Jesus Christ is coming. You know the rapture is about to happen. You know the graves are about to be opened. And you know the seven-year tribulation is about to start. And I'm going to show you proof of that right now. It's one of the biggest signs ahead. Multiple signs, multiple confirmations, all tied in with Jesus Christ and the whole reason that we're saved. And if this isn't marking the tribulation, the first half of the tribulation for the Jewish people, I don't know what is. When the rapture happens and they get left behind for not believing in Jesus Christ and not having the Holy Spirit, Romans 8, 11, if you have the same spirit that raised Jesus Christ from death, then he'll quicken your mortal body and give you life. Well, the same spirit is the Ruach HaKodesh. So just imagine the rapture happening now or any time before Purim 2024 and the Jewish people get left behind every year, three years in a row, there's a blood moon on Purim, on Hebcow. You could go to Hebcow Converter and check it out. Well, here's what's gigantinormous. The first blood moon of these three on the Torah calendar is Passover. So again, Hebcow has March 24th, 2024 as Purim. And the Torah calendar has March 24th, 2024 as Passover. In family, I don't think this has ever happened in history, and I know it's not going to happen again. Three blood moons in a row, all on Purim, in 2024, 2025, and 2026, on Hebcow. And on the Torah, the first one is Passover, 2024, same date, 2025 Purim, 2026 Purim. Again, if that's not our Father showing us and marking the tribulation, then I don't know what is. And time's flying. And like Jesus Christ said, the days will be shortened. And if it wasn't for the elect's sake, no flesh would be saved. So just keep trusting Jesus Christ, family, and keep your eyes on Jesus Christ. And before you know it, we'll be caught up.